Day four. It is Sunday, May something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and it was too much commotion to film in the albergue, so I just kind of got going and posted an update this way. Um, I'm officially starting stage two. It only took me uh, three days to do, <laughs> to do the first day, but you know, I have plenty of time and there's no need to rush to just enjoy myself and and uh, take it as easy as I can. Um, the next albergue for today is about 10 miles from here. Um, and so today does have to be kind of a, a, a longer day just because just that's when the next accommodation is. Um, there is, I am taking the coastal route, so I should be walking along the beach for a good portion of the day. And it does look like it might rain. So, that'll be fun. <laughs> I like the rain, so that's not a, not a problem for me. But yeah, that's it. I'm leaving Villa de Conde, headed along the coast to something that's not Villa de Conde, something else. <laughs> uh, I'm headed to es Esponsende. Ah, I'm so American. Uh, anyway, so that's day four. Here I go. Bien Camino. found another cemetery and yeah again all of these um, grave sites have beautiful fresh flowers that clearly people are coming regularly and paying tribute to the people that have passed in their lives. How cute this little square is. I don't really know where I am, but it's darling. It's like exactly what I picture when I picture like Europe and um, these kind of like older <coughs> historic cities. And maybe that's because it's how Hollywood has painted it, but it's a darling. <laughs> This is the pace I'm taking the Camino. In the days of yesteryear, doctors would often prescribe that people that weren't feeling well or had mental distress, you know, before the days of mental health and psychology, they would prescribe that you go spend some time by the sea. And I always thought that was a weird description, but I learned recently that salt has antibacterial and antimicrobial properties to it, and so spending time by the sea and breathing in the ocean salty air actually helps to balance the ecosystem of our bodies and, and helps kill any unwanted bacteria and, and microbes that might be building up in, in our bodies and so it's actually very healthy for you to spend some time by the ocean and breathe in the salt air. It's also very beneficial to your mind. Looks like I'm 46 kilometers away from Porto, but 
I'm 10,000 kilometers away from Bangkok, so, you know, next goal. <laughs> We made it to the albergue, we're sitting in this restaurant, I'm trying to be quiet so it's not weird, but we just wanted to pay a little bit tribute to my brother Andy because this amazing meal that I'm having is um, uh, thanks to him and his, his generosity and his support of me and what I'm doing and so I just thought I would share my steak. And uh, I did order the dessert as well. Um, and Andy, Andy has always been pretty supportive of me. There have been point, points in my life where he, kind of each one of my brothers have been kind of a big part of my life. In high school, it was my brother Travis. When I got into college, it was my brother Garrett. But. Uh, point in my life where Andy was a big part of me was was just a, just after high school I, uh, he, he I always say he conned me <laughs> he, he talked me into doing some musicals with him and I'm not um, I'm a choir singer I like being in groups uh, I, don't, I don't I don't like being up in front of people and having that kind of attention. It's not, not really for something that I've enjoyed. But I did it to be with Andy and it, it was really an enjoyable experience and it was really a good time for me to be able to get to know him. And then when he first started dating his wife, he would um, he and I would like plan these dinners and like make these uh, fancy meals and get the table all decorated and it was really enjoyable to spend that kind of time with him. Andy is so much more of a people person and it's a skill that I have never had and I've always admired in him. He is also an incredible writer. He has a gift with words and that's probably why he is a people person is that he's he is able to say things in a way that makes sense to everyone and he can, he can say really complex or like talk about really complex things in a, in a very simple manner that, that everyone can understand it. And he he wrote an incredible book um, all about, well it was a Christmas book, but it was a largely, or, I mean it was fictional, but it was based upon his experiences as a paper boy. And I've been thinking a lot about my paper out when I was a kid as I've been on this walk and and how, you know, uh, the, over the things in my life that have prepared me to be on this Camino. And, and my paper route um, has, has definitely been one of those things, but Andy, Andy used his paper route to connect with people and to connect with our neighborhood and to interact with the people around us and to get free food. <laughs> <laughs> but Andy's always been an inspiration to me and, and his ability to connect with people and, and, and it's something that has never really come easily to me. I, I'm very much an introvert, I try to keep to myself, I usually stay pretty quiet, well, I try to anyway. And I, and I don't really like show myself to the world. There are a lot of people in my life that probably don't know very much about me at all because I've never, I've never shown them who I am. And very few people have really gotten to see the real me and who I really am. But Andy is able to just bear himself to the world and, and it's because of his willingness to be vulnerable with everyone else that he is able to connect and it is such an inspiration and he, uh, he he's really been uh, supportive of me through this journey and, and it's been incredibly rewarding and I, it means a lot to me to have that kind of support um, from my family so Thank you, Andy. Cheers to you. <laughs> so I made it to Albergue. Um, 
the only thing they had left, even though I was one of the first people here because I was having lunch, I didn't check in as <laughs> quickly as everyone else. Um, so the only thing they had left was a private room, which is um, kind of nice. I think I might be able to get some <laughs> actual good sleep tonight. Um, there was some snoring at the albergue last night, but not too bad. But this, this room has a cute little balcony. With some clothes on it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my room for tonight. And, uh, I'm gonna go shower and wash my clothes and probably take a nap. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I um, I walked a, most of stage two today and it made me realize that even if I were to do, even if I were to take each stage and cut it in half and do a stage every two days, I would still get to the cathedral on June 14th, which leaves me like two weeks um, to figure out what to do here in Europe. But honestly, I'll probably get there sooner than that um, at, the, at the pace that I'm going. So I really need to figure out what to do once I'm done with the Camino. And, and maybe, you know, a lot of pilgrims just take take the trek back um, and just walk back. I do have to go back to Porto to get my luggage. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just walk backwards and still stop at the albergues on the way back and still get that, like, length of the pilgrimage that I was hoping to get. But I could take a train from Porto to Barcelona or... Paris or Rome or you know someplace else in 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 Europe although those things cost a little bit more money that that's okay I just um but yeah now I have to figure out what to do with myself in in Europe for for two weeks which again is not not a problem that most people have so it's a, a good problem to have first world problems here <laughs> I think my privilege is showing a little. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm here at the albergue. I'm going to just relax and take it easy um, and then call it a night. I will check in for my nightly stand up later. I didn't do my daily stats. My daily stats. So today I have. 31,000 steps. Um, today was definitely my most expensive day. My my dinner provided to me by my darling brother Andy um, was 22 euros. It was fantastic, excellent steak dinner and a great, um, great dessert. Uh, uh, and then the my room here at the albergue because I have a private room instead of a shared room it was 20 euros and then uh, I went to the grocery store and just got some bread and some cheese uh, and some Powerades um, to kind of snack on which isn't something I usually do but I did tonight for some reason anyway I spent like $10 there. So in total, it was like a 50 euro day, <laughs> 55 euros, I think is, is kind of what I came out to be. But all in all, in all I'm actually still under budget because I've had some, some days that are really only like 14 euros. Um, and and the, the idea of the pilgrimage is to try to keep it between 30 and 40 euros a day. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still, maintaining that that budget that is uh consistent with the, the pilgrimage and, and anyway um 
those are my daily stats. Tomorrow I will be continuing on. Today was a really good day. I didn't, I did kind of start to get tired, you know, the last hour of my walk, but uh, I really, you know, I'm really, um, really able to keep up with the pace that I'm on. And granted, I am not going as as far as like the guidebook says to go, but this is my Camino and I can go as far as I want and I can do what it is that I'm capable of doing and I don't have to follow the guidebook. And, and that is true of life. <laughs> this is your life and you do, you do you, man. Anyway, have a good night. I will check in tomorrow. Bien Camino.